would parents need to know about children and media use? What we now know is there are a number of factors that will influence how media exposure affects child development, but we can boil it down to three big things. The first is the child. Um, parents need to consider the age of the child and what their current abilities are, and parents really know this very well of their own children. The second is the content, and content is really king. Um, so if children are exposed to educational um, media early in development, this is associated with better outcomes. However, many, many households have a lot of background TV, and what we mean by that is programming that is totally incomprehensible to young children, so things like sitcoms or um, soap operas, and parents will view these in the background, and in American t households it's about five hours per day. And what we know is that this is associated with more negative outcomes. And the third thing that is really crucial is the context. So when parents view and um, discuss media content with their children, then this is associated with much better outcomes. They learn more and they take that information um, from the screen to the real world. Let's talk a little bit about interactive media, specifically touch screens. Can you tell me what, uh, what your research looked at? Um, so around uh, 2008 or 2009, we realized that there would be a lot of uh, touch screens available and this would help us look at how children might learn from interactive uh, media. So what we did is uh, we set up a game for children to play on the touch screen and it was basically just to make a puzzle. And then we had the real puzzle in the real world, it was a series of magnets. And so what we could do is we could show children how to put the puzzle together on the touch screen and then we could ask them to put, the, put it together there. We could also show them how to put it together in the real world with the magnets and we could ask them to do that there. And we could go um, and we could show them on the screen and in the real world. And what did you find from that? So what we found is that children were actually, this is two to or one to four year olds, were really pretty good at uh, learning from the screen. So when we showed them on the screen and gave them the screen, they could copy us and learn this puzzle. Uh, they were really good with the real magnets um, as well. However, what we found is if we went across the dimensional divide, if we went from the touch screen to the real magnets or vice versa, children had difficulty learning. They showed what we were calling a transfer deficit. They couldn't bridge the gap between the 2D and the 3D world. Do researchers know why that is? Yeah, so this goes back to this um, idea about the child's capacities. And what we know in very young children is that their memories um, and uh, perceptual skills are developing very rapidly. So we know that this is a constraint on their memory. In fact, they literally it's harder for them to make connections uh, between what they see on the screen and what they see in the real world. What are the implications from, from what you found in this research? Right, so the implications are really um, that we need to provide children a little bit of support in their learning. So we know that we can watch them in their learning um, and they can do things on the screen, but we need to help them bring that information um, into the real world. And what we have found is um, when parents are able to um, interact and be involved with their children around media, just as they would with a book, um, so if this is on touch screens or television, when they describe um, what's going on and help them, essentially this can almost remove the transfer deficit entirely. Uh, so this parental involvement, m helping children make the connection between what they're seeing and doing on a screen and what's happening in the real world is really, really beneficial. Can you give me some examples, Rachel, more examples of what parents can do? Right. So if, for example, there is a picture of a cat on the screen, um, the parent can say, this is a cat just like our one, to help them bridge that gap. Um, or if they're about to go to the zoo, they can talk about having gone to the zoo and having seen uh, the giraffe in the zoo, and now they see the giraffe on the screen. So making the connections as much as possible to what has happened already in the child's life and to what is happening on the screen. What kind of learning skills are kids gaining from that, from bridging that gap and having parents help them bridge that gap? Right, so this is helping um, them actually be more flexible in learning. And so if we think about um, what is expected of children in preschool classrooms, they're expected to uh, learn information, they're expected to play with Legos and then think about math concepts or 
to hear a story and then think about um, what that language means. So practicing this uh, flexible uh, ability to go back and forth between different things is quite helpful um, for when they are getting to preschool. What are these parents doing with their children? We have a we have many games that we show them what we know that uh, children like. So one of our games is making a rattle. So um, what they might see is um, the two-year-old watching a rattle being put together on a video and then he will be given those pieces of the puzzle and he will put that rattle together himself. Um, in other uh, clips we might see the parents sitting with the child and uh, drawing on a screen and then the child uh, drawing on a screen as well and very likely the parent talking um, while they're doing that. So parents are actually very, very good at this. Um, uh, they're very good at describing what is going on and because they know their children so well, uh, they, can, they can know the things that they like. So if they know that their child loves the color green, they may talk about green and this is green grass. Um, so it's a very, very helpful thing when parents are able to do that is to sort of be with the child and know them and then describe what's going on for them. How much time would parents spend on, on this kind of a, an activity to make it effective? Right. Um, so the time commitment is, you know, we have to be realistic as well, I think. It's really important that it's not just that it doesn't have to be 24-7 that all of this is happening. So for example, you might be, a parent might be making the dinner, um, the child might be uh, viewing something or playing an app, but if the parent knows what that content is ahead of time, knows when the cat is about to walk on the screen and goes and talks to them and said, look, there's the cat, I wonder where our cat is or there's some blocks on the screen and then after the, um, the video is over or after they've played with the app, they go and get the blocks, the real blocks themselves. So it doesn't, it just has to be a little bit of information with the parents helping connect blocks on the screen to blocks in the real world or the cat on the screen to the cat in the real world. For parents sitting at home, are there other ways that they can involve themselves and interact with their children and, and technology to, to help them learn, to help them build these skills? I think the really uh, easiest way to think about it is for parents to think about what they typically do when they're reading books. So when they're reading books, they don't really think, um, expect their children to read by themselves or to figure out the content by themselves. But I think because um, apps involve interactive components and um, the videos show all the sound and movement, that parents expect that babies are really, and young children are learning this. And we now know there's this transfer deficit. So if instead we think about, parents think about what they would do with books and apply that to apps and apply that to videos, this is the type of interactions that we know really, really help in book reading and help for literacy. And we also now know from our recent studies really help children get over this transfer deficit. If there were one takeaway message, one thing you would really like parents to, to learn from watching this, what would it be? I have three real, real takeaways. Uh, the first is uh, to reduce the amount of background uh, media that is being used. Um, so turn off the TV when nobody is watching uh, or turn your cell phone to do not disturb for a brief period of time while you're playing with your child. The second is to choose the content carefully. Observe what your child is doing when they're using the content because you know your child best. And the third is to interact when you can around media. And is there anything I did not ask you that you want to make sure people know? when they're choosing content, um, to really try to observe whether or not what they're learning. So for example, we did one study, um, the game that I told you about before, this magnet game, um, and the puzzle on the screen. And the only change that we made is that we allowed the pieces to move by themselves on the screen instead of showing them how to put it together themselves. And what we found, which was very surprising, is that when we gave them the touch screen, the children could not put the puzzle together. So having the parent involved or having someone, an older sibling, show the child what to do on an app was really important. And again, this was something that looked so straightforward to us as adults. The pieces moved together, they created the puzzle, they saw exactly the same thing. But having that other person show them first 
helped them um, make the connection to learn how to use this new tool. Because really, touchscreens have not been around for very long. They only came out in 2010. So this is a new tool for both parents and for children.